Now we're going to look at the JavaScript console to see what it can do for us. It's a very handy tool for learning basic JavaScript in general, and with a debugger, can give you great insight into the code you're writing. But for now, we're just going to look at the console. I can open my developer tools using Command Option I or Control Shift I on Windows or Linux. If that opens the web inspector for you, you can switch it over to the console, just clicking the tab named console. In Firefox, this is called the web console, not just the JavaScript console. I'm going to make this a little bigger. All right, let's see what we can do here. This console lets me execute JavaScript right in line. So if I type, for example, four plus three, and hit return, I get the result, seven. I'm executing JavaScript. Along with being able to execute code, I can also inspect code here. There's a built-in object in JavaScript in web browsers called window. And if you type a period after any object, you can see all the properties that are available on that object. These will be different properties that will tell you things about that object or different functions you can execute on that object, like window.alert, which will just pop up an alert. It's blank because I didn't give it a message. Also, there's a global object called document. And if I type a period after that, I can see, once again, lots of tools available to play with here. I can also define variables here in the console. I could say var x equals five. The returned data for an expression like this is undefined, but x is actually defined. So if I type x and I hit escape to dismiss that big pop-up, hit return again, I get back the value that I assigned, five. I can also assign other variables with more complex things like, let's say I create an object called my friend. And to create an object, I'll just pass a set of empty curly braces like this. Once again, I see undefined, but if I type my friend, I do get back that empty object that I created. Now I can start to set properties on my little object. I'll give my friend a name, call my friend Margaret. And if I type an up arrow, I can get the last line or the last block of code that I typed here in the console. So I hit up arrow, and now I'm going to set an age also. We'll say that Margaret is 37. And now if I look at my friend again and type a period, I can start to see all the properties that are available on any object, as well as the ones that I created myself, like name and age. All right, let's clear this with the trash can button. I can also declare functions here. It gets a little tricky when you're typing what are usually multi-line expressions, like defining functions, but we can give it a try here. Here's a function called talking dog, and I'm going to hit shift while pressing the return key to get some line breaks here. And then I can use my keyboard to navigate into the body of this function. And let's use window.alert and make this dog say woof woof, like so. Now if I hit return, once again, I get undefined, but now this function is defined here as long as I don't refresh the browser. So if I just type out talking dog like this and hit return, I get back the definition of the function. Different developer tools will show you this information in different ways, but I can see that this is a function that I've defined. If I want to actually execute it or invoke it, I need to attach the parentheses to the end there, and now I get my alert that says woof woof. This all works fine for experimenting directly in the browser, but most of the time we'll be writing our code in actual pages. So let's try that and see how it works. I have a script file that goes with this page open in my editor. Here it is. If I want to interact with the console from a script file, I use the console functions. There's a couple that we'll look at now. One is console.log, where I can pass a message into the console. We'll look at a second one before we go look at the browser, which is console.error which is very similar. We'll save this file, go back to the browser and refresh and see what happens. I'm gonna open the tools up again with command option I and refresh. So here is the result of the console.log. It's just a plain message, unformatted. Console.error looks very different. There's some color here. And if I disclose this, I get what's called a stack trace that shows me what code was executed to get to this point where this error happened. In both cases, I can see the file where this log message or this error took place and the line and column number in the text. One more thing about these functions. Along with just being able to pass 
a scalar value, we'd call it, I can pass in variables. So let me define a couple. Variable one will be the number two, and variable two will be hello. In console.log, we will pass variable one. And in the error message, we'll pass in variable two. I'll save these and refresh. And there we go. I can see the value of each one of these passed into the log or the error. These can also take multiple parameters. So if I wanted to pass both into the log, I can do it like this. And I can pass in a message that goes with them to help me figure out what exactly it is I'm looking at if I can't remember. Variable one and variable two. And this works for log or error. Like this. I can pass in as many parameters as I want into either of these, and they'll be printed right there in the console. So I'll save that, come back and refresh. Variable one and variable two are two and hello, and variable two is hello. Now you've seen some of the basics on how you can use the JavaScript console to learn about JavaScript. As you become more comfortable writing JavaScript, please do check out my course, Learning JavaScript Debugging, to learn how to use the debugger that's also built into these developer tools. Learning how to use a debugger can really change one's life for the better. But for now, the console is a great tool, and you should check it out.